Welcome to this bonus episode of the Turnaround Podcast. In this episode, you'll hear from Wallace Clayton, a friend and teammate of Squirt, during his Rockingham Community College career. Also, another friend of Squirt's that some of you may know, 13-year NBA veteran, Chucky Brown. From Union, South Carolina, I played there and Greer High School. Played for two years at Greer, two years at Union High School. I was able to play on a team that was a runner-up for the state championship in South Carolina back in 2001. I played against Kenyon High School out of Columbia. From there, I was more of a football guy at the time until I injured my shoulder. And so I gave going to RCC which is Rockingham Community College. And that's when I met up with Squirt. We was um, roommates, actually. I met Squirt. It was like a tryout up at uh, Rockingham Community College. We got to know each other. I got to know his family. He got to know mine. And uh, once the time was report to RCC, we was roommates. Him, it was me, Keon, and BJ. We all was roommates in this duplex on Piedmont Street. We, we bonded well with each other. We got to know each other. with a spurt, hard-working guy. So he's like the big brother of, of us all. So and that's why I met um, Squirt. And that's a little bit about myself as well. I met Squirt. No, I seen Squirt play first. And I was late getting there. Me and another guy, we were not too late, but we were late getting there. He was already on the court once I got there. And so that's why I remember about Squirt. I just remember him always driving to the hoop, which is a good thing. He was a veteran style at a tryout. You don't want to shoot too many jumpers or anything like that. I remember him getting to the cup, being physical, playing hard defense. So with us, it's mainly because none of us really, I think only like two people, three people on the whole entire team played with each other. So it was more of a, a bonding thing with us. We bonded a lot, got to know each other. One thing I can say about Squirt, Literally, he was the person that kind of taught everybody how to properly train, in a sense. Squirt was in the weight room before practice. He was the first one to practice, last one to leave. He'd do some stuff after that. He was going to get up early in the morning and running, trying to encourage other people to do the same thing. He, he looked at it as, okay, this just is made it to this step. Now I need to get better to the, get to the next step I'm trying to get to. And he bought his body, eating right training right, making sure you're doing the proper things to work on your game, not just going in the gym, playing one-on-one, -on -one, messing around. No, he was the type of, he took it serious. He took it as, okay, this is business for me, and you should be business for everybody else. He could have just did his own thing and not said it, but he kind of encouraged everyone to go out here and work on your jump shot, work on your left hand, work on your, your dribbling, your ball handling skills, finishing at the rim, stuff like that. So. He was ahead of us in that aspect of, you know, y'all need to get up and train. I know y'all want to go out here and have fun, but also this is not the the end. This is not where you want to be at. So work hard enough so it, it's no excuse. And that was Squirt. One thing I can truly say about Squirt, and this is something he used to say all the time, you need to be your own man. I coach now in Charleston, and I tell the kids the same thing he used to tell me and the others, so you got to be your own man. You got to be straight up. You got not real. You got to be yourself at the end of the day. You can't be impressed by how another person is doing, or you can't be influenced by what another person is doing to think you can do the same thing. You don't know what type of work they put into it. You don't know what what they did to get there. You have to have your own path, and we used to say that to us a lot because some people are influenced by other people, but your talent might not match up to that talent. So you have to put in a little more work. So what he was saying is you just can't go out here and say at the time it was what Kobe Bryant, Tracy McGrady, Allen Iverson. You can't go out here and just 
be them. You got to go in the gym like they do and put in the work. Funny now because how he was training, <laughs> how he was training back then, like he used to get up and run, eat this, help, all these healthy meals, and you're a kid, so you taking junk food and all this other stuff. He was more advanced in that way as everybody's now like into their body and how to make sure they're taking care of their body, make sure they're getting the proper rest, making sure they have a routine of like, when they're going to the gym. Like back then, he was like that. So it's kind of ironic to see how like NBA players, college players, even high school players now is has bought into that, which is like real crazy how he was, he was way ahead of his time. My name is Chucky Brown. I grew up in New York City, moved to North Carolina when I was 14. My grandmother had gotten sick. My father's from North Carolina. I went to NC State, got drafted second round, played 13 years in the NBA. Also have done some scouting in the NBA for eight years and done some coaching in the NBA Developmental League for also eight years. And now I currently am a high school basketball coach. That'd be around 2000 or 2004 or something like that. I think it was just like a conversation. We never had played against each other or nothing like that. But I think it might have been just like a conversation or something. And we started talking. And at the time, I might have been in the D-League coaching at the time. And that's how we met. So he had incredible belief in himself and his ability. I think that relationship developed because I always gave him my honest opinion. If I didn't think he should do something or I gave him the advice that I would do you know what I'm saying but I let him you know if you want to do that go ahead but this is what I would do you know what I'm saying so I always gave him honest advice and I just appreciated that he felt confident in me that I was going to give him the right direction that he would ask me because a lot of people they don't ask for advice a lot of people just go do and then if something happens wrong they just deal with it but I think because we've always talked and respected one another and he's always given me his honest opinion about things and I've always given him my honest opinion. I think that's why our relationship is like it is because we're, we're honest with each other. We've got no time for BS. So I think that's why our relationship has grown. At the time, he had been over in Lithuania playing and you know, he was just trying to get back. He was just trying to get back and wanted some people to take a look at him. You know, I think he was just trying to get in front of some people. And it was hard because you know, each year, if you're out of it, you got more dudes coming in. So that kind of pushes you further and further back. So I think, you know, he just wanted to get an opportunity. We've always talked about things. I don't think I've ever, he's such an upbeat guy. I don't think I've ever heard him like disappointed and it sounded, you know, disappointed. His disappointment might have been for a little bit, but then he was always like, you know what, got to keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing he always says, I got to keep it moving. So his disappointment is not for long if it happens so he's never called me and been down in the dumps and i've had to talk him out of that you know what i'm saying he's just a positive guy so you know he just be like yeah this happened man but you know what you gotta keep it moving like, you know he has been like that with me whenever we call each other like he'll call me he'll be like big homie and if i call him i'll be like big homie you know bull city what's up baby you know so I think he's always upbeat and pleasant, has always been that way. And I think that's his biggest quality in that if you bring him around, you don't have nothing but positivity. So I think he's been very positive, you know, and, it, and it's easy to take the negative. It's very easy to do that, but it, it's very hard to remain positive, especially things that have gone on, you know, with his life and, you know, just around just what happens here in America. You know, it's very easy to take that negative route, but I don't think he's ever done that, at least not with me, not that I've seen. Well, I think when, like, when he first started, it was somewhere he was working, and I might have just given him the advice just to be quiet and just listen, observe what's going on, and don't talk too much. Because people get tired of hearing when somebody talks too much. That way, when you don't talk a lot, when you do say something, people listen like, oh, wait a minute, he talking. You know, so I think that might have been the only advice that I've ever given him. And so I think I forgot where he was working somewhere. You know, we talked and laughed about that. You know, but that's been pretty much it. Just, you know, just basically just I always told him to stay positive and just, you know, keep your head down, do your thing. And don't be the first one to be speaking out there because a lot of these people talk and they be saying nothing, you know, and just make sure you listen to everybody and respect everybody. I, I expect him to always stay positive, you know, whatever path he's taken. Or, or decides to take, I'm going to support that that path because I know he's, you know, I know where his heart is. You know, his heart is going to do the right thing. So, you know, whatever path he takes, I'm going to support him. I'm with him regardless. Yeah, I saw him play. It was up in Durham. They had like an alumni game, 
and uh, I saw him play there, and I also saw him play. He was playing in, I forgot what that league was called, but he was playing down in Fayetteville, and I drove down to Fayetteville to watch him play. But the squirt was a good defender. He was a great team player, you know, didn't force anything. And uh, he's one of those players that goes unappreciated and that the stat sheet don't always show what he does. You know what I'm saying? So he's one of those type of players. I like him to like a Tony Allen type of guy that stats don't show what he can do. You know, the stats don't show his value to a team. And I think sometimes it goes unappreciated by people that don't know the game. But a coach knows and a coach will respect his game and what he does and appreciate what he does. I say stay around the game, man, as much as you can. If it's high school, if it's women, if it's give the knowledge that you've gained to someone else because it was already about you. You had your time, so now it's about somebody else now. So it's important to give back to younger kids and let them know that it's not just about playing, too. There's other opportunities in basketball if you don't make it as a player. So you have to let the kids know that as well. You, know, you have to let them know that you can be a referee. I do it. He does it. So... You can be a coach, you can be an announcer, you can also look at it from the financial side. You can be a financial guy for one of these guys that's making all the money, you know what I'm saying? But you can stay connected to the game and there are many ways that you could do it. So I would say if you want to be around the game, it's not just about playing. It's about many other things that you can do if you really love the game and you want to be around it. And you can still be connected to it, you just ain't going to be playing. And that ain't all bad. You can't play forever anyway. You can do those other things much longer than you can play. This has been a Vanguard Podcast Network original. Stay tuned for the next episode of the Turnaround Podcast and follow the Turnaround Podcast on Instagram by clicking the link in the show notes. If you'd like to book Stuart Holly for a speaking engagement or to be a guest on your show, please reach out to theturnaround77 at gmail.com and someone will get back to you within 48 hours. Thank you for listening.